way the new system would work. The first line of defense is the PAR, the surveillance radar which detects and tracks incoming objects at very long ranges. The PAR and its data processor continuously provide long-range filtered information to the MSR. This radar provides more precise data on the incoming missile. With its own data processing system making computations in millionths of a second, the MSR can select targets and give the command to fire interceptor missiles. First to be launched would be Spartan. Under constant control and guidance by the computer, Spartan soars to intercept above the atmosphere. For intercepts of closer in targets, the smaller, quick response Sprint missile is used. The MSR is also capable of controlling Sprint missiles located as much as 25 miles from the radar to provide greater area coverage. These sites contain only Sprint missiles which are launched and guided via communication links with the MSR. The interceptor warhead needs only to be detonated in the vicinity of the threat to neutralize it. Special all-weather facilities allowed schedules to be maintained. Over 6,000 antenna elements were mounted in the PAR face. Some quarter of a million feet of coaxial cable connected the elements through the seven-foot thick face to corresponding electronic components inside the building. Many of the rooms housing critical equipment had to be shock mounted to survive in a nuclear environment. Processing equipment transforms the received signals into digital form used by the data processing system to control the equipment involved in an engagement. motor produced almost a half million pounds of thrust. The most powerful solid propellant motor yet developed. Fins on the jet head steered the missile within the atmosphere, while exhaust gases expelled through the fins steered the jet head outside the atmosphere. In this typical intercept exercise, the re-entry vehicle comes in from the right. The photography is repeated using stop motion. Because of its speed, some 150 intercepts and tracking data missions were conducted with about 90% success rate. The last 21 missions were completely successful. During the entire Kwajalein effort, most of the missions were observed and recorded by personnel and equipment on Russian ships.